This is Gabriel Gonzalez with the Cage Side Press here with Elimale McFarlane who had a very eventful vacation. So really just the missile strike was supposed to happen and there was an actual fire. What was more frightening? For sure the missile strike or the fake missile strike. Uh, just getting that text on your phone. I was like, this is not a drill. Seek shelter immediately. Ballistic missile inbound was like a wake up call. It was eight in the morning. And so, yeah. I had just flown back from Kauai where the fire happened and we didn't sleep, we slept maybe like an hour. So yeah, I was in a nice deep sleep and then all of a sudden I woke up and I'm like, okay, time to get into action. I mean, uh, this is kind of a, almost a stupid question, but you're on an island. What does someone do to duck and cover when they get a text like that? Man, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, my house doesn't have a basement. A lot of us don't have basements actually. A lot of our houses are on poles or stilts of some sort, you know, because of the heavy rains and the beaches and everything. So, uh, yeah, like we, or my father and I, we were actually going through the house trying to cover our, uh, all the windows, close all the windows, but that really wouldn't do anything. There's like missing louvers everywhere. So we're just like, all right, well, let's just start saying our goodbyes and just start hanging out. So yeah, we just went, we just went and laid down in bed and we we're just like, all right, love you. See you later. <laughs> Can ask, were you guys just huddled together, like just bring it in right now, just in case? Yeah, yeah. And I guess who, what, did, what words came out when they said false alarm? We almost had a feeling though, because we didn't hear the sirens. Normally, the sirens would have been going. So you know, and my dad was like, "Well, it would have been here by now if it was real, because the false, um, the false alarm notification didn't come until almost 40 minutes later." You know, so yeah, we were we were fine. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, there we go. Sorry, Mr. Gareth Davies almost knocked over my tripod. But, you know. I'll just be in the background. For real. No, he's, I mean, it's a shame because he's having a little kung fu movie right in front of us. But, yeah, going forward, I mean, um, the fire, first off, I'm very sorry. I'm just very unfortunate. We saw the picture of your belt. Scott Coker is here. Have you asked him about sending you a new one? No, I haven't, but I don't know. I, I mean,. He'll, he'll give you a new one when you defend it. I get, I know. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. So, but it's not a big deal to me. I mean, yes, it was my belt and everything, but you know, I, that doesn't make me not the champion that I don't physically have. I mean, I, I have it. It's a piece of like melted metal and ash, but I brought it with me. So maybe uh, you guys will see it at the fights on Saturday. There you go. <laughs> it's going to be the most interesting ornament ever brought by a fighter, and you got King Mo on the lately too. So. Yeah, all right, so, you know, another question. You are very big with your team, with Manolo and everyone. I know you coach up-and-comers like Juliana Miller. I guess, how is that because you only a few fights into your pro career, not like a spanning a decade and everything, but then you're also a very respected teammate. I know a lot of your teammates just love working with Alima Lay McFarlane. I mean, talk to me about how that helps you out as a world champion. Oh my gosh, yeah, like you said, you know, my team is everything to me. Uh, without them, I would not be over here at all, standing with you. Um, you know, they come in for all of my camps, they help me out with anything I need. Uh, they're all my best friends and they're my family, you know, so... So, I, I really think it was fate that led me to that gym, you know. I'm sure I may have found success in other gyms as well, but I know that I'm supposed to be at that gym. Like, that's the people I'm supposed to be with. They took me. They built me up from the ground up, and so, yeah, I know that it was fate. <laughs> there you go. I got to ask you and your coach, Manolo. First off, I think you guys had the best coach and fighter picture of 2017. Whose idea was it for Moana and Maui? And I guess, was he just down to, like, get up in the garb immediately, or did you have to do some coaxing? If anybody knows Manolo, Manolo is game for anything. So, yeah, I mean, when the movie came out, we, we were like, we have to do this, you know? We just have to. And so, uh, yeah, we, we got costumes together. And we saved it, too, because we, the movie had come out. I fought maybe twice since the movie had already come out. But we were like, we got to save it for, for something big, you know? And so we're like, all right, this title fight, this is it. It's going to happen. <laughs> well, I think it was a hit. I think social media really enjoyed it. I think it got a great reception. Moving forward to business, you just had a big fight with Valerie Letourneau in your division. Last time I took some guessing on who you fought next, I got it completely wrong. So I know that's the front runner, but I want to ask you, who's up there right now for the title? 
I think Valerie, just because you know she, you know she did well in her promotional debut. She won. She's a UFC veteran. Fought uh, for the belt in the UFC. You won all five rounds with Joanna Jerzyk. You know, so I think um, for sure it would be Val. Have they talked to you about a timetable for that one? Um, no, but I'm actually gonna try. I would like to fight sometime in April, and I know that there's a card in Chicago with a. Uh, Fedor and Frank Mir headlining that, so I thought that would be um, a good opportunity. So, you know, but it's whatever Bellator wants, and yeah, but ideally I'd like to fight in April. There you go. Would you be okay being the co-main in that one? Because I know there's a bit of the Douglas Rory thing oh, with... Yeah, no, you know what, honestly, I'm totally cool. I'm not one of those fighters that's like, why am I not the main? You know, uh, I'm fine with whatever they... Yeah, <laughs> no. I'm not, I'm not Diva Lima until I cut weight that I start being a huge diva. But uh, no, I, I don't mind it. All. I was gonna say that's almost a better nickname than Alima <laughs> All right, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't let you go without asking this question because people love to speculate. Fans, yeah. hypothetically, how does the fight go down between you and Nico Montano? Oh, Nico! I actually really like her, and you know what? I think it would probably be standing because it's so hard to take her down. You know, I think her um, her last fight with Roxy. Uh, that was the first time she got taken down the entire season, you know, so I know she, she looks like she has a really strong base, good anti-wrestling, and I'm a wrestler, you know, so I, I feel like it would be on the feet. There you go. Well, Lima, best of luck with everything. I hope they replace your belts and everything because that was very unfortunate, and, and we look forward to seeing you back out Thank there. You.